I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now we are still talking about the manifestation of God's love. And before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Now let me tell you something. The Lord spoke to me a few days ago and he said, you know, you know how um, you're just doing stuff and then the Lord just interrupts you and gives you a word. And he said, when prices go up, don't think of how to make more money. Increase your thinking and believe I can meet that supply. So sometimes, maybe you went to buy something, something you know this thing used to cost this much. And then suddenly you go and the price has gone, I mean, crazy. And then you go, what is, what is happening? Now, the normal thing we say, what is happening in this country? Can you imagine what they are doing? Can you, can you, can you? Now, there is always that temptation to complain. But then you remember. That's why the Lord said we should be calling forth our daily bread every day. And let me tell you this truth. Your daily bread is not influenced or is not affected by any kind of inflation. Because you're not asking God for a specific amount of money. That's the sweet thing about it. You'll say, Lord, meet my needs today. So if your need used to be maybe for, maybe there's a bill that used to be maybe 10,000 and now that bill has grown to 30,000, he's still the same one who will meet it. Praise God. He's the same one who, you don't have to tell him, Lord, um, you need to increase the money. No, because see, it wasn't money we were asking for. We were asking him to take care of that thing. And if he's the one that was taking care of it, he's still the one that will take care of it today. Praise God. So as we call forth our daily bread today, don't, don't start thinking, Father, price of food have increased. Price of transportation have increased. No, Father, I make demand for my daily bread today. And that daily bread includes everything that I need to do. Are you ready? Release your faith right now as we make this demand. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. See, what I'm sharing with you, why, why have we been talking about the love of God throughout the month? I'll tell you why. Everything, everything, everything that needs to change in life. See, Proverbs tells us, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. So everything, whether you succeed or you fail, is from your heart. Believe me. Whatever you become in life is always from your heart. So that's why it says, guard it with all diligence. Because see, your heart is the production room of your life. It doesn't matter what is thrown at you. It, you determine what you're going to produce from it. And I'll tell you the sweet thing about our hearts. Your heart is that kind of production machine that was not designed to produce with any specific material. What it is designed to produce is the outcome, the end product. And here is the funny thing. Everything, every material you throw into your heart, if you take charge of your heart, you will still produce the end material. Now, you know, for example, a plastic factory, they can only use um, rubber substance and chem chem chemicals to produce their plastic stuff. When you pour sand inside those machines, you've destroyed those machines. They won't work anymore. And then they won't give you your end product. Refineries can only make use of crude oil and then they begin to refine petroleum products. If you put water in there, it cannot refine anything. Hey, but our heart is different. The way God designed our heart, every raw material you throw in, the end result is always 
going to be the end result. You know, there's a garbage in, garbage out. If you are in charge of your heart, it's not garbage in, garbage out. It's garbage in, product out. <laughs> it's go I'm going to explain it to you in a moment. But let's look at our scripture. First John. John is that disciple whom the Lord loves. And if he's the disciple the Lord loves, he's the disciple that I love. Praise God. Oh yes, praise God. John, 1 John, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 16. John speaking here and he says, And we have known. Now this is the, you see, when he says guard your heart, this is the, the most solid protection system you can use to guard your heart and we have known and believe the love that God had to us hallelujah we have known you know I was telling you yesterday truth is have you known have you come to that place of knowledge have you settled it in your heart God loves me we have known and believed in the love that God has for us. You see, life will throw anything at you. You can never determine what life will throw at you. You can't. You can never determine if sickness is going to be thrown at you. You can never be determined if hatred is going to be thrown at you. You can never be if, if, if bad people, you just can't determine that. You wake up in the morning, you go out through your day, you really can't tell who you're going to meet on that day. You're not going to, you can't tell who's going to step into your office today. You can't tell. Someone can just wake up without plan and just come to your office or come to your house and say, oh, I was just in the neighborhood and I just thought to see you. Now, these are things that happen. Someone will just step in and say, oh, I have this need, please. You're the only one that can meet the need. You are going to meet different situations today. But let me tell you one truth. And this is one thing you must believe. And if, if your heart is regulated by this love, John says we have known and believe the love that God has for us. If you understand this and your heart is regulated by this truth, then your principle to life will be this. It doesn't matter what is thrown at me. That thing didn't come to me by accident. It's coming to me so that it will help me produce the outcome, the final outcome for my life. Didn't God say that I know my thoughts concerning you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring to pass that which is the plan for the final outcome. He knows what he has planned concerning you. And it's good. But you see that good. The good is the final outcome. But before you get to that final outcome, a lot of things are going to take place in your life. A lot of things are going to be thrown at you. But here is the point. The point is you keeping your heart on that final outcome. When he says, I know the thought that I think concerning you, he didn't give conditions to it. He didn't say, hey, if nothing bad happens in your life, then you'll see that final outcome. That hope and that future, you will see it. But if terrible things, you know how people sit down and say, I would have been a great man if not that one of my uncles did this and this to me. Oh, my father wanted to send us to the best school, but guess what? He was fired from his place of work. Some people conspired against him and then they fired him from his place of work. That's why we had to go to a public school. We couldn't go to the, we, we, we had to be withdrawn from the private school to a public school. Oh, I had saved all the money I, I needed to save to start that great business. But someone swindled me and collected that money. If not for that person, I know where I would have been in life. Brothers and sisters, I want you to listen to me. All those conclusions are lies. Why are they lies? They are lies of the devil. The devil have given you those lies to keep you in that spot. But truly, they swindled my money. I didn't say you're lying about your money being swindled. 
but you're lying about it being the result of where you are today. You know why? That's those people that swindled you, those people that did you harm, they didn't show up by accident in your life. Oh, but if God was with me, why didn't he stop them from swindling me? Uh uh, that's not it. Because he's with you, the swindling was not his problem. Mm. Do you even read your Bibles? Do you read your Bible? I'll tell you this truth about God. You see, God, when he wants to bless you, he can use anybody to bless you. He can create circumstances. No, that's why the Bible says when, when your ways pleases God, God will cause even your enemies to be at peace with you. It's not about the enemy. It's about you and your way pleasing to the Lord. That's why I was telling to talk to you about your heart being guarded. How, what, why, do you, why do you need to guard your heart? You guard it to please God. You guard your heart to please God. I'll tell you what God can do. Now, you work in this organization, okay? And, and God wants to promote you. He wants to make you a manager. And your boss doesn't like you. It's a known fact that your boss doesn't like you. But you are this fellow who just always love to please God. Do you know what God is going to do? He will go to that your boss that doesn't like you. And he's going to whisper to that your boss, move this person out of this place, move him to that, that other state that nothing is happening there. And guess what? It will come to the mind of your boss. And he's like, yes, let me punish him. Let me punish her. That's what is going to come to his mind. That's the, because already he hates you. He doesn't like you. So when that thought is dropped in his heart, he gets excited about it. Yes, I've seen how to punish this person. And then he begins to work it out and work it out and plot and do all the plotting, speak to this one, speak to this one. And then they just waiting for you to commit one offense. And lo and behold, you too fall into their trap. Commit a little offense, as little as you came to work maybe 30 minutes to be, uh, after the time you were supposed to report to work. And a meeting is held and say, oh, because of this, you're going to be penalized. You're going to be punished. So we're sending you to so and so place. And you go. What kind of wickedness is this? No, brothers and sisters, it's not wickedness. But they were wicked to me. They, they planned, they plot. In fact, someone confided in me and told me all the things they said about me in that meeting. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. They were responding to God. <laughs> now, it is your choice to sit down and start whining. Can you imagine? But where was God when they were planning all this evil against me? Why did God allow them? Can you imagine? It looks like they have succeeded. Who told you? No, no, who told you they have succeeded? What am I supposed to do, Pastor? I'll tell you. Father, there is no plan any man plans outside of you. For you to let this come true this way, Lord, I know your thoughts concerning me are good. I refuse to walk in hate towards them. I refuse to be bitter concerning them because truly they don't know what they are doing. Lord, you said you will be with me as I respond by going to that place that they have sent me to. This is all I desire of you, that you be with me. Brothers and sisters, that's all you need. Step right there. With that attitude, that place is going to so blossom that the real bosses, you understand what I'm talking about? Will make your own branch greater than the place you left. The result you're going to be producing in that place will shock everyone. 
then they will come before you and say, eh, can't you see eh, that after all, we're the ones that sent you there. Aha, uh -huh. just like Joseph, you remember and say to them, you meant it for evil. But my God, hallelujah, meant it for good. Now, the same situation, I, I'm, I'm painting a picture to you. The same situation, if it's a boss that loves you, God comes to that boss that loves you and say, look, this my son, this my daughter is ripe enough to be a manager. Send him to a new branch to start. And that boss said, mm -hmm, it's true. It's true. And then he, call, he calls you in for a meeting. He said, look, I know you. I can see your talent. I can see your strengths. But you see, we're underutilizing you in this place. So this is what we're going to do. We're opening a new branch in Sudan's place. It's a new place. So listen, you have the ground to do anything and expand anyhow you want to expand. Trust me, it will be well. Go. Now, you're not going to sit there and say, why they hate me like this? You, you take up the challenge and then you go. The point is, you were moved from point A to point B. In the second scenario, you will go with this determination. I'm going, to, I'm going to show this my boss that I'm capable. He believed in me. I will not disappoint him. That's the attitude you will take there. Now, in the first scenario, you will go like, man, this world is so wicked. See, see what these people did to me. So, of every, look, it's me they thought to post to this place that nothing is happening. And then you go there and you sit down and every day you're like, should I resign? Maybe I should resign. You start calling up friends like, so what's happening now? It's like, I'm looking for another job. Bro. It's like, I'm looking for another job. Bro. You see? You were moved. That's the point. God's point is that you'll be moved from point A to point B. But what is going to make you prosper is not God now. It's the state of your heart. And let me tell you the truth. In both ways. Because see, the second scenario, I want you to follow what I'm sharing with you. In the second scenario, if after all that and you are so excited, you're like, look, I'm taking up this challenge. If someone now comes to you and says, hey, um, can I tell you one truth? So what's the truth? I heard your boss talking to someone else. And they were talking about you. And your boss actually said that you are a problem to him. He wants to take you out of that place. Now, to a normal man, that's going to deflate every determination you had in your heart. Wow, are you serious? So I was sent here to be punished. Wow, man. You see what's going on? Wind is just tossing you to and fro. The same action, but just a news, change your perception. See that now? Now, this is why Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? He's talking about losing control of his emotions. Losing control. You are supposed to be in charge of your emotions. You are supposed to be in charge of your soul. So it doesn't matter how someone's attitude is towards you, you take charge by believing in the love that God has for you. So whether they did it for good, you still go there and say, Father, I take up this challenge that is from you. Whether they do it for evil, Father, I take up this challenge that is from you. And get rid of every bitterness and every other thing in your heart. You know why? Because God loves you. Praise God. It is because of that love. He is the one that is going to bring Ayanamakasaya. You plant, it's God that gives the increase. So that's all you need to do. Go plant and let God bring the increase. Praise God, my time is up. Hey, believe in the love that God has for you. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.